Hi everyone, um, I'm Alfred. Welcome back to Morrowind. Now with that, Bethesda. Um, so as I record this, it's Morrowind Day. It has been 18 years since this old dang old game came out. So this game can now buy cigarettes and appear in porn. Um, now you'd think I would do something special for that day besides recording it, but I didn't actually think about it until just now, so I guess you'll see this when it comes out. And this is already going to be episode three. So before we get too far into this, um, this is our map. We can out fast travel. You actually can fast travel in this game. What you can do is pick a direction and start walking. Um, this is an oddity, even for the Elder Scrolls. This is, I think, the only Elder Scrolls game that does not have fast travel. Because uh, I think it's even in Daggerfall. Um, so, yeah, this is how we're going to get places. Of course, there are the Silt Striders, but... That's not exactly what we want. So we're just going to walk until we get back to the path. Yep. Going to make our way over there. Sweet, sweet time. What's up, Altmer? How interesting. Aren't you a sight? Yeah. You love my bare crotchal region? So if we want, we can actually hold on shift to run. Um, so these are how we find our way places. You literally, you look at the signs, and you're like, okay, so this leads to see the need. And as you can see, it sure dang does. And then these lead to Pelagia and Vivek. We are going to Balmora, because, as you can see, if I hit J... It's a loud noise. My instructions are good to go to the town of Balmora in Vardenfell District and report to a man named Caius Cosadias. To find out where he lives, I should ask in Balmora at the corner club called South Wall. When I find Caius, I'll give him a package of documents and I'll wait for further instruction. So, Balmora, yep. So I'm just going to hit the auto walk key and I'm just going to start going. Um, oops. Um... So yeah, it's Morrowind Day. Morrowind is 18 now. And man, look at that sky. It has honestly aged pretty well. Um, You would, of course, think I would have done something more for it, like uploaded something on Morrowind Day. Uh, and I'm pretty sure you're going to be seeing this a couple of weeks or so after Morrowind, because I didn't even know that Morrowind Day was happening when I recorded the first few episodes. It was recorded in April. Um, and I started setting everything up to publish it all on Cinco de Mayo. So, yeah, really not part of the plan. Um, it kind of came out of nowhere. And part of that was because I was four when Morrowind came out. And so I don't really remember it. Um, I got into Morrowind after Skyrim because I was just looking back and I didn't give too much of a whiff about graphics. Um, and just the, the weirdness of it is what really m made me grow attached to it. And then all the additional material, like Coda and the books and the 36 Lessons of Vivek and just how the Dark Elves live. And it's really cool to me because Skyrim came out and everyone played it. So Vivek, Balmora, Pelagiad... Heart. So if I wanted to, I could actually just keep following this path and go to Vivek, but Vivek is a little further out and Balmora is only right there. So you can see that we actually haven't made it too, too far because here's Sidonin and here's us. But the local map shows all the zoomed in stuff. Now, of course, part of that is because I'm not sprinting. Um... But yeah, the 
Dragonborn, sorry. The Dragonborn DLC for Skyrim came out, and that was my first interaction with Dark Elf Society. Oh, I think we're going to see some native fauna. Yeah. So, um, this is a plumber. We're going to dispose of corpse to keep the, uh, I guess my CPU running well. I don't know if I really have to do that anymore. Um, sorry, I'm just trying to read these signs. Pelagia, Palmora, okay. So, I saw Dragonborn and... It was a lot of things that I really wanted because it was just so weird and so cool at the same time. Um, and so going back to Morrowind, I found a lot more of the same because, you know, Solstheim, the island that Dragonborn is set on, is really just half miniature Skyrim and half miniature Morrowind, which is why it's also one of the DLC islands in this game. Um, I will be doing the DLC. I want to maybe 100% this game. I see some danger. Let's see how well this goes. And this is also going to be a good time to try out. All right. Nothing, huh? Say good night then. Where was I? Solstheim. Um, Solstheim is half a miniature Morrowind and half a miniature dragon <laughs> Skyrim. Um, and it appears in both of these games. I want to do the DLC of these games. I want to do all the main quest lines and a bunch of the side quests. I want to, I want to capture as much of this game as I can. This game is a lot worth capturing. So, that leads to Balmora. And this is a little Legion town, I think. Plagiad. What is Plagiad? Plagiad, I think it's just a port town. Forgot to put that on. Anyway. Like, just look at these giant mushrooms. That's so dope. The way that you actually go about exploring Morrowind, looking at signs and navigating through landmarks and finding your own shortcuts is honestly really cool. Um, and you can get that in the other Elder Scrolls because they have, you know, you can just choose to not use fast travel. But, um... In this game, you don't really have the choice to fast travel at all. And so, on the one hand, that does limit your game. But it really is interesting to just walk through this land. This weird, weird place. Because like, if you look right here, I could be playing just a really, really downgraded Skyrim. And then you look a little bit over here and you see giant mushrooms. Not to mention things like Quamas and Scribs and Guars and Cliff Runners. <sighs> and Jeremy Soul is just killing it on that motherfucking soundtrack. The soundtrack slapped so much that they basically brought every song back for the other Elder Scrolls. Whether or not it actually makes sense. Hello, Richmond. Begging your pardon, have you seen a bandit nearby? I must find him. Yes, I was walking along here, minding my own business. Suddenly, a bandit jumped at me from behind. He was a dark elf. A strong, dashing dark elf. He didn't harm me in any way, although he did take my jewels. He was quite gentle, and he talked to me for what seemed like forever. Never mind the jewels. I just want to find the bandit again. He was charming, funny, and I simply must see him again. His name? Nelos. Nelos Onma, a name that will stay on my lips for eternity. Perhaps you can find him for me? Please, I cannot live without knowing 
if you could ever love me. I have nothing to offer in return, but could you not help me for the sake of love? I'll find this man. You'll try? Thank you so. I'm sure you'll be able to find him. He mentioned something about having to head north, so I imagine he might be found in Pelagiad. Please, if you find him, give him this glove for me as a token of my love. I'm sure he'll want to find me again. We got her left glove. Which means that we are going to turn around and just go all the way back. Um, I'm sprinting now, but my stamina is going to run out, so I'm actually going to stop doing that. Um, so yeah, I just really found a lot of good stuff in this game. And this game is what really started to help me understand Elder Scrolls lore and the story of it as well. Um... And I, I want people who watch this LP who don't know Elder Scrolls or who only know Skyrim and just kind of breeze through it to get a better grasp of it. Um, and since we'll need something to talk about on these long walks on the beach, I figure that lore would be a good way to fill time. Um, I do intend to grind in this LP, just as with Kingdom of Loathing. Um... Although I don't know if the episode where I say I'm going to grind has come out yet for KOL. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to narrate stuff while I grind. Reading the books that we haven't found yet. Um, perhaps fan fiction. I would be really down to read Landfall or Coda. Just because the fan fiction for this game is really really interesting i mean some of it's just whatever but um we're gonna work on the side quest some more there he goes i'm fine thank you what can i do for you so you can see that his yes. opinion of me was much higher because i'm a dark elf so that just adds stuff to me. Nello's on Ma. I've seen him around here. Quiet man. Keeps to himself. Not sure what he does, actually. Other folks might know more than I do, though. Might check in the tavern. They get all sorts of folks in there. Uh, thanks, Imperial Guard. Excuse me. I'm just trying to fiddle with my recording setup here. Um... I'm not playing with a controller, I'm playing with keyboard and mouse because it's the only real way to play. Eh, you know what? Perfect crime. So, let's take a look at the local map. So I actually have not played Morrowind in quite some time. Um, I loaded up those test saves On your way. just to see if it runs um, and to help remind myself of how the damn thing even works. But one of the things uh, that happened to me, and this is just very personal for me, uh, I didn't have a computer for a couple years. Super weird. Um, So noisy. Ah, oh, soul gem, nice. Uh, I didn't have a computer for a couple years, so unless I wanted to play this thing on an original Xbox, I was SOL. And I actually could have done that because of how the backwards compatibility works with the Xbox One um, until I didn't have an Xbox One anymore. We are a... PlayStation 4 household, mostly. Um, I have been for a while, basically, since the PS4, like, since I got my hands on one. Sorry, I'm just very... Ooh, nice. It's so loud every time. Just a moment. Let me fix this because that's really not loud. 
And yeah, turn this up. I'm trying to see my mixing. Um, turn this a little down. That one. Much better. All right. Um, you'll have to pardon me. I've started about 15 different tangents and didn't finish any of them. Um, I haven't had a PC in a, quite some time, so I haven't been able to play The Elder Scrolls. That should be... That should cover it. Um, can you help me with Nellos? Tavern. Where's the yes. tavern? So, um, what I was getting at there is that my spatial awareness, already not amazing, is disimproved by the fact that I am rather out of practice for this. Oh, man. Sun's going down. Hell, yeah. This game is so dope, everyone. All right. Nope. That's fine. I'll take that hit. Don't need that health anyway. To make faith there. So, the Elder Scrolls. The Elder Scroll. I really want to get across what this game even is. Hell yeah, it's an orc. Adventure lies beyond the cities, friend. Ooh, an orc woman too. <laughs> hey, you barter. Cool. Oh, hell yeah. Heavy armor. It's so strong and yet completely worthless to me. Um, I will take one. Just to get myself a little more going here. And then let's see if I can hawk anything. Any buddies? No. Eh, you know what? I will probably get better stuff than that. Oh, well. <laughs> Certainly I know him. Handsome fellow. Quiet, though. I don't think he ever actually lives around here. But he's often around. You might check in the Halfway Tavern. Quite a few folks gather in that place. Trying to be a good boy. Trying to not steal as much. A book. All right. Ordo Legionius. The most disciplined and effective military force in history, the Imperial Legion preserved the peace and rule of law in the Empire. At need, the Legion garrisons can be swiftly mobilized to protect against invasions or internal disorders. But in Vardenfeld district of Morrowind, the local forts help to ensure law and order. Is that the right word? I thought that was spelled with an E. Insure. I suppose it's like insurance. Ensure. Insure. Hansel. Ensure law and order, providing guards to supplement the local units of the temple and the great houses Lalu, Redoran, and Telvani. Um... Morrowind is kind of run by the three great houses... Uh, fighter, wizard, and other. Redoran is big, you know, strong dudes, fighters, swords, axes, that sort of thing. Telvani is wizards, and because people can't get out from underneath Gary Gygax, even now, even still, um, these dark elves run on the uh, the idea of, oh, you killed your boss, cool, you get his job. And then Halalu is other. It should be the thief, but it's actually like the bartering community. Uh, there are five legion garrisons in Vardenfell District. The three town garrisons, Moonmuth, Legion Fort in Balmora, Buckmuth, Legion Fort in Aldhrun, and Fort Plagiad in Plagiad are at full complement. Um, complement just means that they're headed out. 
The Hawkmouth Legion, garrisoned at Castle Ebonheart, is also an elite honor guard unit and is also at full complement. The Frontier installation at Fort Darius in Nisus Village is currently the only understrength garrison in Vardenfell. Qualified citizens seeking enlistment in the Imperial Legion should apply to the commander of that garrison, General Darius. The Legion selects candidates on the basis of superior endurance, the soldierly virtue, and trustworthy personality. The citizen's virtue for service in the Legion is the model of duties of Imperial citizenship. Troopers are expected to demonstrate mastery of long blades, spear, and blunt weapons. Legion troops train with shield and heavy armor, and so must be skilled at blocking and, and moving in heavy armor. They basically want you to fight like an Imperial. As a trooper or knight, you must master the long blade, spear, and blunt weapons. You can block. You must block whatever blows you can, take unblocked blows in your heavy armor. Recruitments must also be proficient in athletics, bo uh, both to march long distances with heavy packs and to advance and maneuver, charge and retreat on the field of battle. Um, Imperial Cult Altar. Would you like to... Damn, how do I... Well, damn. Can I... Nah, it's fine. I'll roleplay myself as someone who's vaguely religious. Um, oops. Citizen. Keep having to remind myself to talk. Um, so the Elder Scrolls is, I kind of just want to give a good explanation of what it is and that, well, there you go. There's a better sword. You know why it was better? Didn't have to pay for it. Oh boy. So a wakizashi is essentially a small katana, for those who don't know. Katanas are um, a type of blade that originates in Japan. They're made by folding it over a thousand times. Um, contrary to popular belief, almost all steel is folded. Almost all steel weapons are folded because it makes steel stronger and gets the imperfections and impurities out of the steel itself. You take me for a fool, guards? Whoops, didn't mean to do that. And by that, I mean I didn't mean to get caught. Netches, yeah. This guy's a pro. You can't escape. Let's see how well this does. Actually. I shall enjoy watching you take your last breath. Let's resist Let's arrest. You're made of. Oh, they got me. Yeah, I would like to load that, actually. Um, I guess that's what I get for attacking people without wearing any clothes. Fine, you can have your loot, dude. Well, you can have that stuff. You'll get more than you bargained for, thief. Thievery is a serious offense. Guards! Damn. He's got me every which way I turn. Um, I really should end one of my tangents. The Elder Scrolls is a massive constructed world. Um, it was actually originally Todd Howard's D&D &D campaign. Right. Um, yeah, the guys who developed all the original Elder Scrolls is... is it was their D and D campaign that they based the world off of, um, and the nature of the Elder Scrolls is that it is a living piece of lore. It's always changing and evolving, and in some cases, getting better. Um, you know, sometimes it's worse. Um, Keep moving. Armor. That might be not. That might not be bad. Um, I think this is the tavern. Halfway tavern. So, the lore is often in a really weird place, but another thing about the Elder Scrolls is that it's uh, very much a hybrid between 
a bunch of other worlds. It's, I think this, the Akrum. Yep, that's that hair. That's the canon hair. Mutsera. Mutsera. What? Yakum me? Speak Ashland. Not speak so good old elf. Sorry. It's in the tavern somewhere. Check by the bar. These are just whatever. Um, the Elder Scrolls is very, very weird in its lore. In some cases, it almost works more like science fiction. It's very much... From where do you hail, friend? <sighs> it's very much a hybrid between things like science fiction... Oh. Well, they got me. Now you die! <laughs> Um, it's a science fiction, just as much as it is a... I don't know a, if I can help you, but I'll try. Just as much as it is something like a fantasy world. It's a lot of things. So, in addition to being, you know, very obvious... Is Sujama? Hell yeah, you got Sujama. Fork me that, dude. Um, in addition to being... You have to pardon me. I'm kind of a dumbass here. Bone meal, bread, crab meat. I don't really need that much water. Can you buy these? Damn. Damn. Um, I'm trying to make it so I don't spend all my cash on this. This poison isn't great. I don't usually care too much about poisons, although it's a really great way to stack damage on people. Um, oh yeah, you can actually haggle in this game with these buttons. Um, okay, fine. I'll buy four Sujama. That's fine. Um... The Elder Scrolls is both a fantasy world and a cosmic horror story and science Wealth fiction. Beyond measure, Outlander. But um, this is the guy we've been looking for. I'll be happy to help you, stranger. I'm Nello Sonmar. People are fairly friendly here in Velagiad. We don't mind answering a few questions. I'm Nellos. What do you want? You have what? How odd. She was a beautiful young woman, but what would she want with a rogue like me? She is lovely, though, and seems sweet. For the first time in my life, I actually felt a little remorse for robbing someone. I should see her again. Tell her you have a note from Nilos. I won't forget this, friend. Yes, just tell her you have a note from Nilos. I think she'll be happy with it. So we can head back out. Mas um, Sarah. So I'm just picking over all of these to find what I actually want out of this. Uh, for those who don't know, Cosmic Horror Story is the genre that Cthulhu belongs to. I feel like it's a pretty safe bet to say that people know who Cthulhu is. Um, by now, he's, you know, pretty common and popular. And of course, there are people who's like, who's Cthulhu? But I feel like most people, especially those who are going to be watching a Morrowind LP, would know. Um, but for those who don't, the works of H.P. Lovecraft are the source of what's called cosmic horror. Uh, they're horror stories in the sense of that they're scary, but not like, ah, boo, I got spooked by a ghost. Um, more of the fact that uh, it's 
something completely alien. Like, imagine if you were an ant and the villain of the story was a human. The humans don't understand ants. They don't know your language. They can barely even comprehend you. Humans and ants are just, what the hell, right? Um, and it's like that, but instead, the gods in Cosmic Horror Stories are the villains and humans are the ants. Um... And there's actually a lot of that in the Elder Scrolls because the gods are very difficult to pin down. They're... All of them are very odd. Humanizing them sometimes happens, but it's not too, too common. Um, their whole deal is that they're kind of just really hard to understand. Even Talos, the god who should make the most sense, might... Oh my god. Uh, it just crashed. Alright. I'll see you guys back in a second. Um, I suppose that's not a bad place to stop the episode. Um, I hope you've enjoyed my stupid tangents. <laughs> I should have seen this coming. I really should have seen this coming. Um, in the coming few episodes, I'm going to download a few mods to maybe mitigate this. Uh, but man, let me tell you, my face is red. This is uh, this is not intended. This is, this is not good. <laughs> this is bad. Um, wow, this one really ends like a wet fart. Uh, hey, that's the episode, everyone. Thanks for coming by. I've been Alfred. Um, thanks for listening to me be an idiot about Morrowind. <laughs>